Hello and welcome to the channel. My name is Lauren. If you're new here, if you're not new, you know how much I love green, especially since I literally just posted a video yesterday comparing two green palettes in honor of St. Patrick's Day. Well, today is actually St. Patrick's Day. Happy St. Patrick's Day if you're doing something fun today. And I actually ended up getting the newest palette from Nomad today. It's literally an Ireland palette. It is called Ireland Wild Atlantic Way. And I thought, look, we have to review this for St. Patrick's Day, okay? Because, hang on, hang on. Look at this. Look at how green this is, okay? If you've been here before, you know I love color. You know I love green, especially. There's just something so special about green eyeshadow. It makes me so incredibly happy. So when Nomad launched this palette, which is $49 by the way, and links below if you're interested, I was interested because I actually ended up not picking up the last palette they did, even though it had multi-chromes, I was very tempted. But I said, look, I didn't need that palette. This one I felt like is a happy addition to my collection. Or is it? I don't know. We are gonna have to try it out. We're gonna do some swatches. You know, I also decided to do one additional thing in this video. I actually just watched my friend here on YouTube. Uh, her channel is Beauty and the Beaker. I'll link it below. But what she did is she had a bunch of green palettes and she went through and she swatched them. And she said the one palette she didn't have that she wanted to compare this one to is actually the one we used in the video yesterday, which is the Nomad Monteverde palette. So I did do a little bit of a few comparisons of the greens in this palette, and I compared them to the greens in the Monteverde palette just to see if any were the same or if they were unique in each palette. Um, because some did look very similar, and I was curious as well. And since she didn't have that palette and she did so many great swatches, I thought, hey, uh, you know, I'm going to fill in that one blank, okay? I have that palette. Let's do some swatches. So I did. So yeah, that's part of this video too. Um, I also, I linked her video down below if you want to check it out and see if there are any similar greens in this palette to a handful of other palettes she had. Um, she has a couple um, Odin's Eye that she compared them to, Colourpop, uh, a couple others, and I thought they were really great comparisons. So but I, look, I love a good green palette or a palette that's mostly green. We actually have a little bit of variety in here. We've got some blues, we've got some yellows. We have some more neutral colors in here as well. So enough to play with. But I think what I wanna do today, I'm gonna do two different looks, one look on each eye and just play with this palette and see what kind of looks we can pull off with it. So yeah, let's get into it. I'm going to go ahead, get into the swatches. I ended up putting the swatches to music versus just saying the names of each of the eyeshadows because I cannot pronounce a lot of them. There's a lot of Celtic words in here. Oh, if you can speak Celtic, uh, like it's the most beautiful language. But if you can't, and I cannot, you just butcher it. It's rough. So I decided I didn't want to insult the Celtic language any more than I was already going to. So we set it, the swatches to music. But then we get into the Monte Verde comparisons and there you hear my attempt at pronouncing some of these names. But let's get into it. And uh, we've got Ritzy here hanging out on my lap with his butt in the air. And uh, then let's get into some looks. Okay, so I've heard some people say that they feel like the new palette is pretty similar to the Monte Verde greens. So even though we just played with this palette yesterday, I did want to take a look and see if there were colors that looked like they could be the same. Now, again, I need to apologize for my pronunciation of the Celtic words in here because um, it's not gonna it's not gonna sound great. Uh, so maybe I should have Googled every single word. I did not though. So you're stuck with my non-accent, but 
right off the bat, I think the ones that look the most similar, we've got, mm, I'm not gonna be able to say this, Tint and Tant. I'm gonna have to Google this one. I am so sorry for the Celtics out there and the Irish people. Uh, okay, but I think this one is pretty similar to Glass Wings. So this is this is this color in the Ireland palette. Really quickly, let's just go ahead and swatch Glass Wings right next to it. No, I think that's more olive, but now I'm almost thinking Blarney Stone is a little bit similar. So again, it's not, they're similar, but they're not exact, but those two are actually pretty close interesting and then for everything else the wild rover green spiny lizard possibly so this is the wild rover from the ireland palette let's go ahead and swatch green spiny lizard next to it uh, it's similar but again it's not exact uh let's take a look at crow patrick here and see if green spiny lizard is more similar there Again, they're similar, but they're not the same. I'm actually thinking maybe the Wild Rover might be similar, more similar to Green Vine Snake. Let's see. Let's swatch it over here. And no, that one's obviously much lighter. So no obvious dupes. Um, maybe let's take a look at Green Mountain and, oh, Slante? Oh man, I am just, <laughs> my French in high school is not paying off because that's not even closely similar to Celtic, is it? Okay, so <laughs> Slante, I feel like I've heard that word before and I'm still pronouncing it wrong, but Green Mountain looks maybe similar. So this is it, the Ireland palette, and then this is... Yeah, not the same at all. Like similar vibes, different colors. So everything else, I'm not really seeing any else that I think are similar. Take one last look. Maybe just for fun, we'll try Wildlife Wonderland next to Dia Diadult. And I don't think they're gonna be the same. Just while we're here, while my arm is covered in swatches, you can see it's similar, but again, that's very much not the same. They're not the same. So we've got some like similar colors, but as far as I can tell, there's no exact dupes between these two palettes. There are differences in the greens. We were just looking at the greens today, um, but I also don't see anything else that could potentially be a dupe. So yeah. That's uh, that's what I got with these two palettes since I've heard multiple people talk about how similar they are. So let's move on. Let's get into a look using the new Ireland palette. We're starting with this eye and I've already primed my eye with my Gimme Glow primer in the color Parchment. I thought it was interesting. The last palette that Nomad came out with, one that I skipped even though it was a very beautiful color story, that one had a bunch of multi-chromes and I have their Royal, Royal palette. I don't remember the exact name. And that one has the most beautiful multi-chromes in it. This one does not have any multi-chromes, which I'm actually okay with. I might be dealing with a little bit of multi-chrome burnout because first of all, multi-chromes are really expensive and I am trying to limit my spending. I'm being more thoughtful into what I purchase, not only for the channel, but just for my personal use. I really only want to buy stuff that I can use in my like day-to-day -day life and on the channel as well. You know, a little bit of both. Um, okay. I'm, I'm falling down a rabbit hole. I'm sorry. I'm all over the place. I took a nap. It's my downfall. <laughs> let's go ahead. Let's, oh, these are so pretty. So one thing that my friend Beauty and the Beaker said that I think is actually pretty accurate is that we don't have a whole lot of light tones in here. We've got a lot of very similar like Kelly green colors, which are perfect for St. Patrick's Day, uh, but not a whole lot of light greens. Like this one over here, Definitely not really a green. Uh, neither really is this one, but we're gonna go into this one. This is Malinhead. And I'm gonna start by putting this one, I think I wanna put it like right under my like eyebrow up here. We're gonna do it kind of high. And it is just a little bit of a 
yellow brown, yellow, yellow tan, if you will. Now I have never been to Ireland, but it is literally number one on the places that I really want to go to because uh, it's just so beautiful. I actually spent a weekend in Scotland, so not the same, but very close by. Um, I actually studied abroad in England when I was in college and we did a weekend in Scotland that was put together on this uh, trip that I was on and it was, it was so much fun, but I just, I need to, I, I want to see all of it and only being there for two days, you don't see very much, but I did go on a beautiful hike, I will say. I, I almost was not in the best shape when I went, so there's a lot of huffing and puffing, but my gosh, it was beautiful. Okay, I want to go next into Blarney Stone. I'm going to put that right, oh no, we lost the color. Oh no, okay, the bottom one <laughs> fell out, but it's okay. We're going to have to glue that guy back in. He was really loose when I was doing swatches. Um, so, woo, scared the cats. Okay, so we're going into Blarney Stone. I'm putting it just right down here. Okay, if you are from Ireland, because I know I have a couple Irish viewers, have you kissed the Blarney Stone? Is that, is it really a thing? So I want to do it. And I think if you, what is the story with the Blarney Stone? I think it's, if you kiss it, it grants a wish. Is that right? I'm gonna kiss it. Okay, I'm definitely gonna have to clean up the edges when I do my eyeliner and mascara at the end, because they're a little messy. My edges tend to be a little messy, which is okay. Okay, next, I really wanna go into this Emerald Isle. Oh, I did it again, okay. For now, we are taking that color out because it just falls out. We're gonna go to Emerald Isle here. And I'm gonna just put that one, I think just in my crease, I'm gonna kind of stamp it in there. We're gonna see if these colors look different because Blarney Stone and Emerald Isle, Emerald Isle does look more blue. Okay, yeah, it's turning out more blue. I was worried it would kind of blend in. Okay, now what I'm going to do is I am going to go ahead and put Sliante? Sli no, Slion? Okay, I'm not going to be able to say that one. <laughs> I'm going to put that one on the outer edge of my eye, just kind of down below. That one definitely has a bit of a, a little bit of a bluey hue to it. I'm kind of going over the eyeshadow that I've already laid down too. And then let's go into, ooh, let's go into Savage Beauty here. And I'm gonna put that on my finger and I'm just gonna tap it into the rest of my inner eyelid like this. Getting a little bit of fallout. Not too bad. Definitely be worse. And now I think I'm gonna go into Wild Rover. And I'm going to put that one underneath my waterline to be as green as we possibly can. Okay, I like the fall. It's actually pretty bad. Okay, it was with the shimmer. The shimmer is the one that did it. And I always say at this point in time, the look does not look complete because it just gets pulled together when I do eyeliner and mascara. But I think those are good for the colors that I want to use on this eye. Oh my gosh. Okay, there is glitter everywhere. The fall is pretty intense. Okay, but let's move on to the other eye and do something a little bit different. Typically what I like to do when I do two different looks on the same face, my face, is I like to do one a little more complicated, one a little more simpler. So I tend to go for halo eyes because that's a look that I do in my everyday life all the time. I really like kind of like just a halo look because it's so easy to pull off. So we're gonna go ahead and do exactly that. Now I am... Loving so many of these colors, I'm having issues deciding what to choose. I really want to use the one that fell out, this one in the corner, Cobe Harbor, but I don't want, really want to go all blue. So let's go into Bunratty Castle. Oof, how am I doing with these pronunciations? Is it uh, as terrible as it sounds? Because I'm pretty sure it's terrible. And this is a good warmer leaning neutral brown. Oh my gosh, 
there is a uh, there's shimmer everywhere it's everywhere I'm literally this is just making a halo I actually feel like this one is turning out a little bit patchy on me I'm trying to not blend it out too much because I think it's more like a pressed pigment in that it's going to be better if you just press it into the skin versus trying to buff it out. But it is looking a little patchy to me. We're gonna go with that though. I think that's as good as it's gonna get. Um, okay, so we're gonna go into Cobe Harbor, the blue one that fell out. And I'm gonna put this one on my finger and just pat it onto my eye. Cause I thought it was important to do a look that wasn't green, even though we're here for the greens there's other colors right there's other colors oh that's a really pretty blue too yeah i really need to clean up this eye it's it's bugging me um i'm just gonna go into keem strand oh this one's gonna pop out again hang on so i'm gonna go into keem strand here i'm gonna put a little bit underneath my waterline not a lot okay now i'm gonna put on some eyeliner and some mascara to finish up the look and then we're gonna come back together and talk about the Ireland palette. And we are back with our completed looks. I have eyeliner and mascara on, and I think I'm ready to talk about this palette. So this is the looks that we ended up with after applying everything. So just so you kind of get an idea. So let's talk about my thoughts with this palette, because to be honest, I kind of thought I would have loved it more than I do. There are a couple things that I noticed that found me ranking this palette a little bit lower than some of my other Nomads. Now, I love Nomad Cosmetics as a brand. I love their eyeshadow formula. Their mattes are super pigmented. Their shimmers tend to be super rich, super beautiful. And while to a certain extent that is true with this palette, I just felt there were some things missing. And I feel like it's kind of lacking a little bit of depth to the colors, like particularly the shimmers. I feel like the shimmers just weren't as impactful as they are in other palettes. Now, I just kind of feel like there wasn't quite as much pigment to them maybe. So like, well, you can't see it because I took it out, but using that one in the corner, Cobb Harbor, I've probably called it like three different names at this point. It looks like a dark pigmented bluish color and it just doesn't quite have enough of the base pigment to it to really pull off how it looks in the pan. Now, this is a preference thing. I just like things super pigmented. So if you don't like them as pigmented, then maybe this is actually what you prefer. But I do like it with a little more depth, a little more pigment to it. I also think I need to agree with Beauty and the Beaker's take on this in that there isn't quite enough of a color spectrum with the greens. They all kind of lie along this same type of green. They're very pretty. They're all very pretty. They all worked pretty well. A little bit of patchiness. We'll talk about that in a sec. But they just didn't quite have enough depth to them, enough variety in the greens, if you will. There's no real light green. There's an olive green, but there's no real light green. I kind of would have liked a almost like black green, you know, something really dark and stormy, something like that. I think even the darker colors just aren't quite dark enough and stormy enough. I want it a little bit darker. Um, and again, this is kind of just a preference thing for what I would like, but I just, I don't know. There's just something that was missing from this palette. And even though I do love the color story, I think it's beautiful. I think there could have been more, there could have been more. Yeah, there, there could have been more. There's so many different kinds of greens. I just think there could have been a little more variety in here. And the other thing is I did have a little bit of an issue with blending out and patchiness. And I think it's just because that these are working more like pressed pigments. You need to press them into your eye versus trying to buff them out. They don't buff out quite as well as some other brands would. But, you know, trying to buff it out led to patchiness, led it a little bit harder to fix. You know, it, it wasn't easy to fix. It looks fine now, but I was a little worried about it for a hot second. 
Um, but yeah, I just think that there's not quite enough of a variety in greens here, but they were going for Ireland. So this is very much what I think of when I think of Irish greens. So I think it really does stay true to the theme of what they were trying to do. Putting in a lighter green probably would have taken away from that theme. So I understand why they did what they did. But some of them I just felt like were too similar. So it's hard to see the difference in them when you apply them next to each other on the eye. And most people are probably not gonna apply six, seven colors like I did on this eye. But if you do, <laughs> you probably, there's a couple of them you probably don't wanna use on the same eye because they look pretty much the same. So I just wish there was, yeah, like a, a super dark, sparkly like black green color with some shimmer just super deep i think that would have been really cool i, I would have loved to see an addition like that but i totally get why they picked the colors they did because it really does feel like these are colors that represent ireland really well now i say that as someone that lives in the u.s so if you are in ireland and you disagree with me let me know i'm curious but I, these are the colors that I think of when I think, oh, Ireland, you know? Uh, a lot of greens, a lot of yellows, a lot of yellow greens. So yeah, it's perfect. Um, but yeah, I just, it's it's missing something and I'm trying to figure out what that something is. Now, I do like the eye looks that I came out with. I feel like this one is a little bit messy. I'm just going to say it. I can admit when my eye look is not the best, but I actually like this one quite a bit. It's very simple. We didn't use any greens. <laughs> So, you know, kind of defeats the purpose of trying out a green palette, but I, I do like how this one turned out. But again, I just thought that this blue was going to be a little bit darker. It's a little, just a little more sheer than I thought it was going to be. It's a very pretty color, but it's, again, just not exactly what I expected. So a little bit different. I do have a Nomad Cosmetics uh, palette ranking coming up in a few weeks. So it'll be interesting to see where this one falls on that ranking. Rankings, I feel like a lot to do with preference. So while I love the colors in here, I don't see myself reaching for it and using a ton of the colors at the same time. I can see myself pulling in a different palette with it to kind of offset some of these similar greens. Um, but some of these colors are absolutely stunning. I think the shimmers, while not super deep and pigmented, are very pretty. They're just a little lighter than what I thought they were gonna be. And I think once you play around and understand the formula for the mattes, it works fine. I feel like that was on me. I know better than to buff them out, but it just went buff happy. You know, it happens. I am glad to have this in my collection. I do like green, so I do see myself, again, using this in tandem with other palettes when I'm looking for a good Kelly green, because they definitely have some great Kelly greens in here. And yeah, I, I'm off to celebrate St. Patrick's Day. I don't think I'm doing anything except sitting on the couch, but that in itself is a celebration. I like a good day off. So I hope you are having a fantastic St. Patrick's Day and I will see you all in my next video. Bye.